name is Sophia, and I play the flute and the piccolo. So first, let's start with the flute. So this is what a flute looks like. There's a, a head joint where you blow into, a body where most of the keys reside, and a foot joint. So the flute is a very high-pitched instrument, usually the highest voice in an orchestra or a band. And because of this, the sound of the flute is sometimes portrayed as a bird singing. And it's usually given the lyrical singing melodies as well as very fast-paced solos. I like playing my instrument because I think it has a very elegant and beautiful sound. And the flute is a very dynamic instrument. And a flutist can convey many different styles and emotions by creating different tone colors. So for example, on one hand, the flute can have a very shiny and shrill sound and play a fast passage like this. On the other hand, the flute can also play more mellow and sweet melodies, like this. we can't forget the piccolo. The piccolo is um, basically the flute's shrill little brother, since it's smaller and its pitch is one octave higher. The piccolo is often made of wood, like this one, or it can also be made from plastic or silver, um, and its body is structured basically like a petite flute, and the fingerings are basically the same, with a few exceptions. The piccolo is the highest voice in the orchestra, and it's often used in military band or regular band as well. The piccolo is a daunting instrument, to be sure, but it's easier to learn once you have learned to play the flute first. It's amazing how powerful a sound uh, the piccolo can make, considering its small size. Here's an excerpt from Benjamin Britten's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. everyone, I'm Ocarina and I play the oboe. This is what the oboe looks like. There are three joints on the oboe. There's the bell, which is separated, and then the middle and the top joint, as you can see, it's separated here. And it looks pretty complicated, but on the left hand, you have these three keys, and on the right hand, you have these three keys, and the pinky accesses multiple keys on both hands as well. So on the oboe, there are also octave keys, which will raise certain pitches up by an octave. And there are two main octave keys, one right here, and then mine has two on the back. But usually there's just this one. So my oboe is made out of wood, but it can also be made out of a synthetic material that mixes like plastic and wood, and the material can definitely affect how the oboe sounds. So to play the oboe, I would just take this reed and then insert it. So these are separate components to playing the oboe. So now this reed is a double reed instead of a single reed like the clarinet or saxophone because it consists of two canes vibrating against each other to create a sound instead of just one cane. And a lot of oboe players, once they get to a higher 
quality of playing or are studying a lot about the oboe can start to make their own reads because they learn about their own preferences and how they play. So to play the oboe, I would make sure that the reed is wet and usually I would soak it in some water, but a lot of players can also just use their saliva to wet it. And I would insert it and then I would play. So one of the main roles of the oboe is to tune in a full orchestra because unlike a lot of other wind instruments, it has a steady tone and doesn't require that much air to sustain a tone. The oboe can have a very warm and dark sound in the middle register, so a lot of composers like to incorporate the oboe to create more exotic or oriental sounding solos like Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade. a unique instrument and usually there are only two to four in a section of an orchestra and I really like the oboe because it brings a really unique and interesting sound to musical pieces and there's a lot of room for musicality and expression and there is not really any other instrument like the oboe in the woodwind section so it's definitely an asset to the orchestra and to pieces. Hi guys, my name is Yi Yan Li and I'll be introducing you guys to the clarinet today. The clarinet is a single reeded woodwind instrument with five parts. So starting from the bottom, you have the bell. This here is the bottom joint. And then you have the top joint, the barrel and the mouthpiece. And then if I flip it this way, this is what a clarinet reed looks like. And this little contraption right here is called a ligature, and that basically just uh, kind of like keeps the reed in place. Now, the standard clarinet that most people know of is the B-flat clarinet, and that's what I have here. But the clarinet family is actually pretty big, and to name just a few uh, of the instruments, you have the bass clarinet, which is a lot bigger. It's pretty common in bands you'll see them in pretty much any band and they are also used in some orchestral pieces the a clarinet which is a little bit bigger than the b flat is also used a lot in orchestral repertoire and the e flat clarinet which is smaller and higher pitched is also seen a lot in um band and orchestral pieces the sort of like modern version of the clarinet was first developed in the Baroque era, so in the 1600s, and it didn't become a standard instrument in an orchestra until the early 1800s. And nowadays the clarinet actually has a really large role in orchestras. They usually play a lot of melodic lines and some solos, and they're typically seated with obviously all the other winds, next to the bassoons and behind the flute section. Clarinets have a very rich and warm tone, which makes them perfect for romantic melodies. And nicer instruments are typically made of wood, specifically um, African hardwood. And their keys are made from silver or nickel usually, depending on like, the model that you have. And the instrument has four sort of like distinct ranges. The lowest one is called the Shalomo register. And that goes from the lowest note on the clarinet, which is a low E up to um, this sort of like middle F sharp. 
so that sounds that goes from um <laughs> So that's kind of the range there. The next one are just your throat tones. And that's just uh, four notes where you're not actually pressing down this thumb hole back here. And that's just. The next range is called the clarion register. And that's from this sort of uh, middle B to a high C. And then the highest one is the altissimo register. So that's anything from like a high C sharp up. <laughs> to demonstrate what the clarinet sounds like, I'll be playing a short musical excerpt. I love how the clarinet can express so many uh, different facets of music. It's wonderful, that rich tone is perfect for those lyrical, beautiful melodies. Um, and you can also definitely play flashier, more technical passages. Those are always bound to impress an audience. And it's also a very versatile instrument. Um, you can see it being played in jazz settings i think jazz clarinet is so cool um and it also works beautifully in like a symphony or in marching bands and military bands and different chamber groups um pretty much like any ensemble you put it in it's bound to sound good uh, and at the end of the day i just think that the clarinet is really fun to play we always get to play interesting parts and I think it sounds awesome and it's a great outlet for music. Hi, I'm Noah and I play the bassoon. This is what a bassoon looks like. As you can see, this is my bassoon. Uh, it is a Fox Renard 240 and I've had it for a few years. This is the vocal for my horn, which helps me get sound out of it, as well as my reed. And as you can see, since it's a double reed, it has two blades. The bassoon is a double reed woodwind instrument and one of the most unique of the standard woodwind family. It has a dark, warm sound that fills up the room and can play the role of either tenor or bass voice in the orchestra due to its impressive range. The bassoon can comfortably play four octaves, so many orchestral parts include tenor clef, so we don't have to read too many ledger lines, which, trust me, wouldn't be very good. I chose my instrument originally because I heard you could get good college scholarships if you played it, but I soon fell in love with the instrument. Aside from its amazing tone and range, the bassoon also has some great repertoire that can represent the bassoon's low, middle, and high registers very well, including this excerpt I'm about to show you right now. What's up everyone, my name is Daniel, and if you've been watching this channel before, you definitely see me in other videos, but today, I'll be introducing you to the saxophone. So the first thing I want to talk about with the saxophone is how cool it is. So you see, in like pretty much any group that the saxophone is in, you're going to be the centerpiece of attention. So if you're in a concert band and you hear a solo being played, everyone's going to be like, whoa, uh, who's that saxophone guy or girl? He sounds, or she sounds really, really cool. And that is because the band composers or the people who write the music acknowledge how awesome the saxophone is. And the same thing applies for, for marching bands. Like you might occasionally have a solo here and there 
and the, the band composers will probably write something really, really cool and everyone's gonna applaud you and talk about how awesome you are. And the same thing with jazz bands, like, as soon as you hear the word jazz, you automatically associate saxophones with it. And that means you're gonna be the centerpiece of attention, everybody's gonna keep an eye on you, and, and if you're all about attention and, and wanting more recognition and everything, then saxophone is the right instrument for you. And another cool thing about the saxophone is, is how it sounds. So you see, the saxophone is a relatively modern instrument. It was invented later than, than like the clarinet, flute, oboe, etc. So it, it has a little bit of power to it. Like it has the, the strength and quality of a, of a trumpet and trombone or baritone. While you can also play just as fast and agile as a flute and clarinet, which I think is a pretty good deal to me. And to give you a better idea of what the saxophone sounds like, I'm gonna play a sample of classical and jazz music. That's it for now. We hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Woodwind family. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. And we will see you soon.